take advantage of your city's parks and natural areas, you're doing yourself a disservice. You gotta take time out every once in a while, experience all this life. Enough uh, gloating, enough rant. <laughs> so we're talking about deductively valid arguments. Now the word valid is used in quite a few different ways in today's society. We usually mean valid, like in a kind version of this. We mean something like, uh, I can see why you'd say that. Maybe, uh, how shall we say, uh, more forceful use of the term is, you know, especially we say that's, in, that's not a valid point. Uh, we're saying something to the effect of, I disagree with that point to the extent that you shouldn't believe it either. <laughs> that might be a mischaracterization. Well, we don't mean this. We don't mean this sort of thing. Where we're talking about an argument being valid in logic. Logic does not deal with preference of beliefs. It deals, when we're talking about deductive validity, we're talking about the relationship from the premises to the conclusion. We've seen terms. Terms are not valid or invalid. And, and by the way, terms are neither true nor false, right? Terms either are defined or are well-defined or not well-defined. We've seen propositions. Propositions are either what's true or false, but propositions are not arguments. Arguments are composed of propositions, but they are not themselves arguments. And arguments are neither true nor false. Arguments are either valid or invalid. And validity is not talking about preference of belief or approval, anything like that. What validity is dealing with is the relationship from the premises to the conclusion. said that validity deals with the relationship of the premises to the conclusion. And the relationship is this, that the truth of the premises necessitates the truth of the conclusion. Or another way of saying this is, if the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. Or yet one more way of saying this is, it's impossible that the premises, all the premises are true, and the conclusion is false. So it's three ways of saying this. The truth of the premises necessitates the truth of the conclusion. Uh, if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true, or it's impossible that the truth, of, uh, that, that the, all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. So, as I said, this has nothing to do with preference of beliefs or even, you know, being able to identify with somebody's beliefs. It's not that. It's a relationship from the premises to the conclusion. Now we want to be careful to avoid some misconceptions. All right, so he here's an example of a deductively valid argument. If this organism is a tree, then this organism is a plant. This organism is a tree. Therefore, this organism is a plant. Now that argument is deductively valid. It also happens to have all true premises and a true conclusion. Now having all true premises and a true conclusion uh, is necessary, <laughs> or excuse me, <laughs> if the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. Right? That, it, that's true for a deductively valid argument. But merely because you have all true premises and a true conclusion does not mean that the argument is valid. Right? So here's another argument. If this organism is a tree, this organism is a plant. This organism is a plant. Therefore, this organism is a tree. Okay. All true premises and a true conclusion. But... That's not a deductively valid argument. That argument tries to make an inference from the consequent of a conditional, which is necessary for the antecedent. 
tries to make an inference from the consequent to the conditional to the antecedent, which is a classical uh, uh, fallacy and logic called affirming the consequent. But that doesn't work. I'm going to show you why. I will, I will provide two true premises with the false conclusion that uses the same form. If this organism is a vine, then this organism is a plant. This organism is a plant. Therefore, this organism is a vine. All premises are true. You might say, wait, wait, the, the conditional has if this organism is a vine, but that's a tree. Remember, a conditional only asserts a truth relationship between the two component propositions from the antecedent to the sufficient and makes no claims as to whether the antecedent is true or the consequence is true or false. All it says is if the antecedent is true, then the consequence is false. Huh? And if this happened to be a vine, then yes, it would indeed be a plant. So that conditional, if this is a true, if this is a vine, then this is a plant, that's true. Hmm? Remember our discussion with conditionals when we dealt with the truth conditions for a conditional. A condition is false only if, if and only if, <laughs> the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. That's the only way you could demonstrate that a conditional is false is if the truth relationship of sufficiency does not actually hold. But it does hold. I mean, if this were, if this is a vine, <laughs> then this is a plant. So that first premise is true. The second premise is also true. This is a plant. So both premises are true, but the conclusion is false. The conclusion states, this is a vine. This is not a vine. This is a tree. <clears throat> so validity does not mean all true premises and a conclusion. So we're not going to test for validity by going to our truth table and finding a row with all true premises and a conclusion. That's not enough. Hmm? That's not enough. Uh, all validity means is that there's a relationship. If the premises are true, then the conclusion must also be true. So just to be clear, right? validity does not mean all true premises and a, a true conclusion. Right? You can have all true premises and, uh, uh, and a true conclusion and the argument not be valid because the relationship does not hold. Okay, so try to clear up one misconception. Right? All validity means is that if the premises are true, the conclusion must also be true. That means it's impossible that you have all true premises and a false conclusion. So one misconception is that you in fact have all true premises and a true conclusion, therefore you have a valid argument. That's not the case. We already saw why. It's also not the case that if you have false premises, then you have an invalid argument. That's not it. So here's a deductively valid argument. All right. uh, if this organism is a tree, then this organism is Don Cheadle. This organism is a tree. Therefore, this organism is Don Cheadle. Deductively valid, radically false premise. Right? There's nothing about being a tree which necessitates that uh, the organism is Don Cheadle. Right? just doesn't work. It's a really, really false premise. However, the argument is still deductively valid because right? it has the right form. And it's the conditional with the assertion of the antecedent. And since the antecedent is sufficient for the consequent, we may infer the consequent. So all deductive validity claims is that if the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. It has the right relationship. Right? It doesn't claim that all the premises are true and the conclusion is true, right? That's not the claim. It doesn't claim that all the premises are true, right? Or that, you know, it doesn't claim that if the premises are false, then it's, then it's not valid. That's not it at all. All it's claiming, so it doesn't matter whether the premises are in fact true or false. All that matters is the relationship. All, that's all that matters is the relationship. All right. So you might wonder, well, how are we going to understand this relationship? How are we even going to express it or comprehend it? Well, that's where the truth tables come in. Remember at the truth tables, you get every possible truth assignment for the atomic propositions. Right? And the truth assignments of the pop propositions, the atomic propositions, gives us all the uh, uh, truth assignments for the complex propositions. Remember, the truth value of the propositions determines the truth value of the complex propositions. 
And if we get uh, all those possible combinations, right? We get those co combinations. We can see every possible way, right? That the complex propositions are true or false, and every possible way that the uh, conclusion is true or false, given the truth assignments for those atomic propositions. So we will look at our argument, our, you know, the, the argument on the truth table, and look at all the different ways that's true or false, that the propositions are true or false, and we will try to find a row where the conclusion is false and all the propositions are true. Where the conclusion is false and all the propositions are true. If we can't find that row, if it doesn't have a row with all true premises and a false conclusion, the argument is valid. Right, the argument is valid. If you find a row with all true premises and a false conclusion, it's invalid. Okay. That's the only way an argument is valid or invalid using the truth tables. Now, I, I could try to go through a rather lengthy explanation, try to go through several examples, um, but without something really to look at, it's probably not going to be that helpful. So I have you know, the next video has lots, has, has more than a few practice exercises where I take you through step by step how we go, how, how we go through the, uh, these problems, these uh, uh, the sorts of problems that we're going to look at. Uh, keep in mind there's a difference between a full truth table and abbreviated truth table. Learn the full, full truth table first. That will help you understand the abbreviated truth table, okay? Um, so once again, deductively valid. If the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. This doesn't necessitate that all the premises are true and the conclusion is true. Just if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. This also doesn't mean that you know if you have a false premise that the argument's invalid. Invalid? No, right? Doesn't doesn't make the claim that all the premises are in fact true. Doesn't mean it, and if you have a true all true premises and a true conclusion, then it's no. Only if all the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. And you verify this by putting it out on a truth table, and seeing if there's a row where all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. If you find a row with all the premises are true and the conclusion is false, it's invalid. If you can't find such a row, 